Toyota champs and yes my XPS is on the way very exciting I might get it tomorrow today I don't know at the very latest next week and the Surface should be coming today as well Surface 3 so make sure you subscribe for that we're going to do a deep dive into the white paper and the thermals of the XPS 15 and 17 but first I want to talk about the ultimate or the most expensive workstation which is these dull precision laptops, which are basically just the XPS 17 and the XPS 15 with workstation class parts. And I'll tell you why you might want to get this and why you might not want to get this and just stick with XPS 17 and 15. For me, it makes no sense to get these and I'll explain why. Anyway, what we have here is on the left, the Dell Precision 5550. And on the right, we have the Dell Precision 5750, which is basically the XPS 17. What's the difference? Well, we'll get into that. First of all, these are Precision laptops. Now, Precision products are workstation class products, so they're the absolute highest end, and you're going to pay a lot more for these than the regular XPS 15 and 17. Now, Precision workstations have been used for Game of Thrones. Yes, that dragon is rendered out with a Dell Precision. Probably not the laptops, but I wouldn't be surprised if these Precision laptops have been used at least cadding it out or developing them they wouldn't be rendering them i don't think i definitely think they'll be using desktops in that scenario but anyway they are the cream of the crop here let's let's have a look at the specs all right so the big difference here is in every shape or form they are pretty much the xps 15 the xps 17 other than you get xeon options with the cpu and quadro options with the graphics also, I suspect that they would be factory calibrated, every single one added as factory. As far as I know, the XPS 15s and 17s will be batch calibrated. They never said they were individually calibrated. With the precision laptops, I expect they would be doing that. I mean, this is what you pay the money for. And of course, these come with all the certifications and stuff like that. And a lot of extra software and bias tuning that, you know, IT can manage and stuff like that. We'll get into that when we talk about the thermals. But basically here, if I zoom in there, Xeon, I won't zoom in that much. I'll just leave them how they are. So it's interesting that the 15 inch on the left only has the option of a 6 core Xeon, where the 17 on the right has the option of the 8 core Xeon. I don't know why that is, because they're all 45 watt parts. Can't imagine why you couldn't fit the 8 core in the 15 inch. Makes no sense. But anyway, that's what it is. And basically these are pretty much exactly the same as the Core i9 or the Core i7, other than they are the cream of the crop. We're talking the best bin products. Xeon is the top of the chart. It's better than i9. It's the best of the best. As you can see, you can get V Pro options on various configurations there with the CPUs. This just means your IT department can easily manage it. But then if we go to graphics and we have a look at the graphics here. Now look at the XPS 17 on the right or the Precision 17 inch. You can see RTX 3000 Quadro. Wow. Now that's some serious piece of kit there. If I'm not mistaken, that's based on RTX 2070. Of course, Quadros are not clocked as high as, say, GeForce cards. They're not for gaming. They're meant for workstation products. Now, I've been thinking long and hard over the years, should I get a Precision? Why not? My video editor, I sort of use my laptop as a workstation, but it makes no sense for me. If I was doing solid works or some application that really takes advantage of Quadro drivers, there's no point me going with these precision laptops because I'm going to get better performance out of the GeForce parts, especially for gaming and for video editing. It's not going to make any difference at all. There may be some video applications where Quadros work better, but not for Premiere. And these Quadro parts are also the best of the best when it comes to GPU. I've actually watched a video from Puget Systems who make, you know, high-end workstations. And basically they said when it comes to failure rates, GeForce versus Quadro, twice the amount of failure rates with GeForce. But they did say that they don't really fail that often, but GeForce would fail twice as often as Quadro. So you're getting the best GPU parts as well with Quadro. In all other circumstances, they're pretty much exactly the same, except for the software and BIOS built into these. Now, these are made for mission critical. These will probably be more conservatively tuned than, say, an XPS. Although, when I get to the white paper of the thermals in a sec, they are touting how much better the thermals are and how hard you can run these. You probably know if you need Quadro drivers, Xeon. Yeah, 
Do CPUs ever fail? I've never had a CPU fail ever. Imagine how many products I've had. So usually with the Xeons, you used to get stuff like, you know, more cash, you know, AVX 512 versus 256 or whatever. But these are literally exactly the same in these cases here. So the i9 and the Xeon part, they're pretty much exactly the same. Even the clock speeds. Now, usually Xeons used to be clocked lower, but definitely when it comes to the GPUs, they will be clocked lower. These are made for reliability. They're made for 100% mission critical. You know, the updates, the BIOS updates and that are going to be less often and everything's going to be tested a lot more before it goes out because they cannot have enterprise customers coming back and saying hey my laptop's not working that that's a big headache because they charge a lot for these things let's get into the cooling oh and there's actually another precision this one is the beast beast one look how thick and chunky this one is and actually there you can see mission critical reliability oh yes you get ecc ram with xeon oh, i forgot about that you get error correction certified to ensure high performance applications rely on every day run smoothly error correction all that sort of thing so they're going to be more reliable than say your regular xps but this thing here this precision have a look at this 128 gigs ram up to so it's going to have four slots then if we have a look at the gpu quadro 4000 quadro 5000 16 gigabytes quadro 5000 you can get in this workstation 128 gigs ram so yeah if you ever want to know what the dragon's made with maybe it's made with this thing the dragon on game of thrones i'm talking about let's get into the thermals anyway and I'll leave a link to these in the description if you want. I'll leave your reviewer's guide if you want that too. But here we go. The Precision 5500, the smallest 15-inch workstation in the world. There it is. This picture is really good because that's the old XPS 15 on the left. And on the right is the new XPS 15. So see the difference in the footprint there? Much more compact, the new one, right? Even though it says Precision, yes, they are XPS 15s. Now let's get into this white paper. And it's talking about the precision, right? So basically, XPS 15, 17, it's the same cooling solution. Now, I've read this white paper. I will leave a link to you. But what they basically say in this white paper is, over the years, demand for more high-performance laptops and more mobile laptops has meant that they've really had to work on the cooling solution because they're required to use more power but put it in a smaller form factor. And over the generations, they've needed more power. And that just doesn't compute with making things smaller, right? So in this white paper, they say that they prioritize highest performance above anything else. So that's what they're going for, the best performance while shrinking dimensions. The Dell engineer who engineered the XPS 17 said the XPS 17 was the hardest engineering thing he's ever done. And this is what I like about Dell and even Apple. They'll run things to the thermal limits. They will give you the most performance out of the parts, all right? And some people don't like that. Other companies are more conservative. They'll have 90 degree limits or certain wattage limits and that. Not Dell, not Apple. Let's go hard or go home. That's what I like. Now, the big thing about this vapor chamber, this is in the XPS 70. What you can see on the illustration on the left is they have the fans drawing air in the opposite ways. So these are dual opposite fans and they push air through that vapor chamber. As you can see there in the middle here, if we have a look here, there's actually a fin stack there. The fans are actually drawing in air and then redirecting it straight over the vapor chamber through the middle as well as the sides. Now usually it only comes out the sides, but this one's going through the middle as well because the fans are opposite, so they're drawing air in and through. From what I've heard, this thing works amazing. Now, I will temper your expectations there because it only has 130 watts to cool. So it's a 130 watt package, we know that. It should be able to cool it, but apparently it really cools it really well. Now, they also use gore material. As you can see there, the yellow gore material. And what they're saying is the skin temperature, which refers to the outside temperature, what you touch and what you feel is six degrees cooler because of this core material. So even though it may be hot on the inside, you're not going to feel it on the outside. And anyone that's used the XPS 13 or XPS 13 2 and 1 will know that. It's hot on the inside, it's 90 degrees, but you don't feel it. It feels like really cool. And they also said they have a BIOS where you can select different thermal tables. How much performance do you want? Do you want cool, quiet? Do you want extra performance or you want balanced? 
Now, usually they do this in software. This is BIOS based, so it's gonna be much better than the software solution. And also, they actually have some machine learning to learn which is the best, how far they can push it. So this will actually go into the BIOS from what I understand. I don't know how they're doing that. So anyway, I'll leave a link to this white paper in the description. If you wanna be the king, the absolute king and the biggest baller around, you get the precision. But um, nah, for me, it makes no difference. I'm getting the XPS. If I was doing CAD work or something like that, maybe I'll get a precision. But anyway, catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.